It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. We're gonna respond to a video that was done on TikTok, so without further hesitation, let's begin. I'm not a feminist. I would watch this video and I wouldn't be offended. You know, it was less than 50 years ago that women were allowed to get their own credit card. Before this, they had to have their father or their husband sign off on everything they bought, even if they were earning more than their husband. It wasn't until 1920 that in the US, white women could vote. Black women, however, weren't able to vote freely until 1965. In the UK, it wasn't until 1928 that women got equal voting rights. Cambridge University did not grant degrees to women until 1948. In 1920, women were allowed to attend Oxford University, but it wasn't until 1957 that the quotas restricting the number of women undergraduates were lifted. It wasn't until 1960 in the US that women had readily available contraception, and it was as late as 1967 here in the UK. Yale and Princeton didn't accept female students until 1969, Harvard didn't accept female students until 1977. That is within our parents' lifetimes. The two acts that meant women could get their own credit cards in the US and the UK came in in 1974 and 1975. Abortions were legalised in the UK in 1967 on certain grounds, but women in the US had to wait until 1973 for the Roe vs Wade case. This was then overturned in 2022, Two years ago, millions of women lost the right to abortion. These things have all come into effect in the last 100 years. That is extremely recent history and none of them would have happened without the feminist movements like the suffragettes. So to say, I'm not a feminist, I let my boyfriend pay for dinner, is not only proving that you know nothing about what the feminist movement was, it's also tarnishing the memories of all of the women who fought for you to have the choice to pay for dinner. I find it so incredibly curious that the woman has stated in her video that is actually really important for us to know about her history. Now, in her video, she mentioned about the suffragists. And basically, there are at least two groups during the 20th century for first wave feminists. They were basically known as the suffragists and the suffragettes. And the suffragettes were pretty much well known for being militant in comparison to the former group. And the main reason why I would say that is because we actually have photographic evidence to demonstrate that back then, the suffragettes committed like a lot of arson during their hairy day. And not just that, but there's also video footage of a woman getting run over by a horse because of her particular action that she did. I also find it so incredibly curious that more or less that towards the beginning of the video she had a whole entire list of the various different things that women has gotten over the years through legislation now it's so incredibly disingenuous to say that because of the past actions of people and what lawmakers have done therefore you're forever grateful and forever indebted for this particular movement because of the actions of back then however ideas don't always stay the same forever. Ideas morph over time and also ideologies also morph over time. Rhetoric also morph over the time. And so her making this argumentation is her essentially saying, well, if you criticize the feminist movement, you either have some sort of self-hatred yourself or number two, you're a misogynist because you criticize the actions of the feminist movement. But in reality, we do in fact know throughout the years that the feminist movement, both past and present, did not necessarily want real equality according to the available historical evidence that we see. Now one major aspect of most men that we have to face once we turn 18 is the draft. And the main reason why we have the draft in the first place was largely thanks to the campaign that was done by white fetter feminists. Essentially, what they did back then was try to guilt trip the men to register for the draft, and that's why we have the current day law that we have for the case of registering when you're 18 years old. For the case of domestic violence, you would think that the person who is actually the abuser should be the one that spends time in jail, right? Or get in trouble. 
but unfortunately it's not necessarily the case. There is something that were done by feminists that's known as the Duluth model. Essentially it assumes that the men at almost all time must be guilty of a crime largely because they basically are accused by their spouse of committing sexual assault or violence against that person. Therefore, that man is automatically assumed guilty until proven innocent. What about for the case of divorce courts? Because one of the biggest feminist organizations out there basically is against the notion, the idea of joint custody. Getting back to the topic about sexual assault, it seems as though that feminists don't necessarily take it that seriously either because there was the du lacrosse case that basically accused a lot of players of sexual assault and it turns out it was false. There was the whole entire case of the Rolling Stone story and it was also false too based upon the data. There was also the whole entire controversy about the mattress girl and it turns out that she did a porno with like you know reenacting the whole entire rape that she supposedly had in the past. So like a lot of the stuff that they did about sexual assault is not taken that seriously. There was a case about Johnny Depp and Amber Heard and that whole entire case had feminists going after Johnny Depp even though Johnny Depp was actually innocent. Now getting back to our main argumentation that prior to the 1920s that women did not necessarily vote, that's only slightly true. Largely because the whole entire 19th Amendment allowed women nationwide to basically vote, but prior to the 19th Amendment, there was actually cases of women actually voting. And the main reason why they were voting was largely because basically they had property rights that were given directly by the husband, and that's how women back then, prior to the 1920s, did in fact vote. To end off the video, I want to say that just because there were some things that were good in the past doesn't necessarily mean we're forever indebted for that particular idea or movement. And so movement change, ideas change, and as I demonstrated both past and present, the feminist movement has been constantly targeting men since its inception. It continues to target men with stuff like, you know, yes all men, or the man versus bear conversation. So is it really something that we're indebted to because of the whole entire power dynamic that women had to face in comparison to men for this whole entire movement? But anyway, what do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I won't <laughs> trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare, as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.